there is huge market volatility right now. Some traders are struggling, others are doing quite well. If you want to understand as a short-term trader how to survive this crazy volatility, stick around. Hi, I'm Steve Spencer. I'm a partner at SMB Capital. We're a proprietary trading firm in New York City where we trade stocks, futures, and options. So it's very rare to see the type of volatility we are currently experiencing. The U.S. stock market has experienced a multi-decade decline uh, in intraday volatility. And because of this, many traders are almost shocked when they see the market move the way it is currently moving. And for many traders, this presents obstacles in controlling their risk and being profitable. And I kind of want to walk you through a few things that you can do to control your risk, make sure you're profitable, and take advantage of really what is an unprecedented level of volatility, something that we see once every two or three years these days, not something we really see on a regular basis anymore. So the number one thing that you can do um, to control your risk and make sure you're taking advantage of this opportunity is giving the proper amount of time for preparation before the market is even open. I was up at 5.30 this morning. I was at the office by 7.30. I knew before the market opened exactly what were the things that I wanted to trade and in what order um, I, I was prioritizing them. And on top of that, I knew which things I was prioritizing to trade intraday and which things I was prioritizing with um, putting on longer term swing type positions. Um, so let's take a quick look at kind of my game plan notes that I put together before the open. I actually share these with the traders on their desk and people who we come to our morning meeting. Um, March 6th game plan notes. Um, here are the things we're looking at. I was looking at spies, SPY. I was looking at um, the Qs, the triple Qs, how to trade, basically take advantage of um, market tech stocks um, that tracks the NASDAQ 100. The VXX, which is a way to track the VIX futures, a measure of volatility going forward over the next 30 days. And then finally, TLT made the list, and it very rarely ever makes the list. But something um, unprecedented happened in the 10-year bond. I think it was yesterday. Time's going by so quickly. But the 10-year bond traded below, maybe it was two days ago. Um, below 1% yield and heading down towards half a percent. And TLT was exploding to the upside. And so I knew that I wanted to make um, a multi-day trade in terms of uh, yields moving higher and the TLT coming back down. For those of you who aren't familiar, when bond, when bond yields go down, uh, bond prices go up. There's an inverse relationship there. So TLT has been moving higher. It's an ETF that tracks several medium-term bonds, I guess. And... So those were the things on my list. And so I had the prices. Um, as you're looking at the game plan sheet, you can see I have multiple support areas, multiple resistance areas on the TLT. Um, we really just had, since it's hitting on new highs, we just had kind of the pre-market prices. On the SPIs, what was good about that was the SPIs that actually just bounced from last Friday from 286 to a couple of days ago to, to above 312. So we had already had a really large move up in the SPIs. Um, over the last week, and we were coming back down to support areas we hadn't seen since the beginning of this week. And we had some resistance areas kind of based on the prior bounce. So I had some pretty good levels on the SPIs. The Qs, um, I had a, a good support, but I was more thinking about the resistance areas on the Qs because we, we just the like two of the top stocks, Microsoft and Apple, which comprise, you know, Microsoft, Apple, Google, um, I guess those are the top three, right? Oh, and Amazon, top four, and then after that, Facebook. Um, they're the ones that really move the queues. It's a very concentrated index. Um, and the top three or four names have these trillion dollar market caps. And one thing that you'd notice in the queues that um, because Microsoft and Apple are nowhere near the lows where they were last Friday, even though the market has come in quite a bit, that it was going to kind of be tough for the queues to, to really break down. So what I put on there was inflection. We'll take a look. I didn't actually trade the queues today, but I did have an inflection, which means if, if the queues open above the inflection, get long, 
look for a move up to R1 or R2. Um, if it opens below inflection, you can look for a move into support, although I wasn't as gung-ho about that trade. But the basic what I, the reason we have an inflection column there is it's just my, my notation of saying if this is above that point on that price point on the open, look for a move up to R1. If it's below that point on the open, look to see if it comes into S1 or S2. Um, and then finally, TLT we'll get to as well. So I'm going to go over kind of one by one for you um, the trades that I was looking at and making, and we'll go from there. So VIX was, even though VXX was number three on my list, it really was on top, kind of the number one thing I wanted to focus on um, because the VIX futures hit 50 in the pre-market. And so they, they had gotten up, I think, to the high 30s or maybe 40 last week, um, but then they were spiking all the way up to 50 this morning. And the VIX futures, they're mean reverting, which basically means um, as the market sells off, VIX spikes up to higher prices, and that really is what that's measuring is what the market or what market participants believe um, the SPX, which is the, represented as the SPIs in the stock market, the SPY ETF, what's going to happen over the next 30 days. And so as that, that VIX futures moves higher, it's basically saying we think the ranges are going to be wider and wider. And so as, as the VIX futures got to 50 this morning, that's really pricing in, that's pricing in a really wide range over the next 30 days. I don't know the exact prices, but it might be something like SPY's two, you know, 50 point SPY range, 270 by 320 or something like that. To me, that's, that's, that's a pretty wide range. I'm gonna look for that over the next few days for that to come in. So two things I'm looking at. Number one, I'm looking for um, it to come in on the open and move down and be short the VXX. But number two, I'm looking over the next week, over next the few days, um, things kind of settling in and coming down, maybe to 40 on the VIX futures or maybe even 35. And when that happens, um, I want to have put, put options. And the way we played that was with UVIXI puts, um, because it's triple or double or triple leverage um, compared to just the VXX. So you get more bang for your buck. Um, so let's take a look at some charts. So we have this game plan. Here's the VIX. Pre-market, you can see it had topped out at 32. Um, so I have that as potential resistance. And I had, on the game plan sheet, I think I had 31 as S1 and 30 as S2. And my thought process is basically going in, I don't know if the market is going to sell off, the um, market is going to bounce, and VIX is going to come down, um, if it's going to take out all my support areas. But if it does, meaning if it fails at 32 right on the open, and then takes out S1, which is at 31, and takes out S2 with strength, then I'll start to think about, okay, maybe the top is in for VXX, and I'm going to look at this trending for the rest of the day, you know, down to 28, 27, et cetera. Um, but at a minimum, if I'm getting short in the pre-market, which I was doing, um, and right on the open at 32, I'm going to look, look for a quick move down to S1, which it did actually right on the open and went to S1, and it comes in there. I'm going to cover half of my position for short term at least, um, and then I'm going to look for it to retrace back up. We call it retrace back up to 32, or let's say 31.80 to 32. If I've caught a move from 32 down to 31, um, I don't necessarily need it to go back up to 32 because I've already booked some profits. So I'll have alerts at 31.80, 31.85, 31.90, 32. So at least if it gets above 31.80, I can start scaling into the short again. Um, and if it doesn't go, get all the way to 32 and rolls over like it did in this case, all the way down to S2, I've got some, you know, I've been able to reestablish some of the position that I have covered into S1. So managing risk by using predetermined levels, understanding that as long as it's inside those support resistance levels, I'm going to trade that range. Um, and until it actually breaks outside of that range and shows me um, that it can hold below the range or above the range, I'm not going to you know, press the position or flip the position in the case of if it's holding above the resistance. And I should say that I had such a strong bias for um, the VIX being up at 50 this morning that I wasn't, wasn't even in my thought process if it started to hold above 32 to um, get long. Although if it did it earlier in the day maybe, in this case it did it right at the, towards the end of the day, but I did get stopped out of my, trail, my trailing position. You can see on that spike towards the close above 32. The other thing that I'll do is, um, get an alert when I get stopped out of my short position and make sure that I have an alert if at 32, 31, 90, 31, 80, because at the end of the day, when it gets back below 32, um, and this was in a, you know, I saw one of our, our bigger traders actually take advantage of this. When it came back below 32 and started to show weakness, he started to build into a very large position. That's like 
one of the best trades you can do is kind of a failed, you know, takes out the morning high, fails to break out, and starts coming down. You want to actually, there's a lot of people caught probably getting long, pressing kind of the long trade on the volatility, and you want to, you want to just hammer that by getting short as much as you can as it comes below 32, and then takes out the 31, and, and see if you can capture what happened there at the end of the day. And so, um, and he had a really good day because of that, just that one trade where he went max max size and it ended up going down to below $30, $30 a share, had the momentum. The other thing to remember is after 3 o'clock and especially after 3.30 is you don't want to feed a final hour move. You may have, I actually threw in a tweet related to the spies and we'll go to the spy chart now. Right at the end of the day, the spies tried to break down. It actually went to, and this, by the way, this markup on the spy chart, that's just from, you know, we have that there from the morning meeting. So we had R1, 295, R2, 298, um, R3, 300, S1, 292, and S2, uh, 290. So when we go into um, the SPY chart, what you can see is um, I put on R1 and R2, so I was more thinking about kind of the upside, if we could bounce. You can actually see the markup in the pre-market when we did the morning meeting. I kind of was describing what it might look like if we actually bounced from 292 up to R2 and kind of show, as we're doing the meeting in the pre-market, saying, okay, well, maybe it'll hold this 292 here. If it does, it'll spike up to R1 to 295. Maybe it'll pull back, hold a little bit higher, and then boom, we'll get R2 to 298. You can kind of see right on the open, um, it was below 292. We went up to almost to S1. We came, we pulled back down. We made a higher low at S1 at 292. And then we had that move to, um, to R1 and then R2 to 298. So SPY was pretty easy. I actually didn't trade SPY right in the open. It wasn't until after I put on my positions on the VXX and TLT that I moved over after 10 o'clock to SPYs, which was great. It was good timing because we obviously we started to kind of kind of bounce there and hold higher. And once we got above R1, we went right up to R2. Um, and so what I'm doing there is, again, in the SPYs, if you look at it, it stayed inside of our price levels all day. Even at the end of the day, when it ripped up $7 in the final 30 minutes, um, the high was R2, the morning high. And so as long as you're disciplined about using kind of the price, price levels, and then I guess the question you say to me is, well, Steve, how do I determine R1 and R2? Um, what I would say to you is this. We have a two-hour free workshop, tradingworkshop.com. I spend 30 minutes explaining how I select stocks before the market opens, how I develop the levels. Um, that's a start. So click on the link above. Um, check out the two-hour free workshop if you haven't checked it out yet. Um, and I do have a morning meeting every day for people who actually do train with us or, or have our tools. So, um, and it's practice. You know, you, you kind of watch stocks trade every day. You have, I have three time frames that I look at. I have like my intraday chart, which shows the pre-market and the post-market trading. I have my 30-minute, two-week chart. And then I have my daily chart. And I'm identifying levels. Like when we look at the, the spies right here, I'm identifying prices where there have been buyers, support areas, or where people had bought before. Maybe it's the pre-market. Maybe it was on Monday, um, 298. Um, maybe it had been resistance on the way up when we bounced from, from 290 back up to 310. And so now that we're gapping below, I'm a, there's a pretty good chance that if we bounce to that 298, there's going to be some supply there for people who want to get out at better prices. But the main thing to understand here is I don't need to use moving averages. I don't need to use the 10-day view up. What I need to do is understand where people, where there, people bought prior, at prior levels, because that shows me there's demand at that price. Where did they sell previously in the, the prior few days? There means there's supply, there's likely to be supply at those prices. And those are the most important levels by far for somebody who's trading intraday, or even intraday or multi-day swing as well. Um, Intraday VWAP obviously is very important because institutions are, are accumulating positions against the intraday VWAP or, or selling positions against the intraday VWAP. So those are the first two. Um, we have two more. Um, and before we even look at the other two, here's another lesson for you in terms of how can you control your risk in a super volatile time like this. Number one, if you're used to trading, let's say you normally trade the SPIs with 1,000 shares. Move your tier size down to 500. It doesn't mean you can't have multiple build into multiple tiers. So like maybe before you were building from 1,000 up to 4,000, now go from 500 into 2,000 and, um, or maybe even lower because again, the volatility um, we're seeing intraday, like the range today was, what was it, $7, which is actually lower than yesterday's range. 
Um, that's the third day in a row, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the, the volatility has come down. And we had gotten up to about a $14 or $16 range a few days ago, and I think it was a $9 Two to, on Wednesday, and then it was $8 yesterday and 7 today. So the volatility is coming in. Even though we had a big spike in the, the future, the VIX futures this morning with the gap down, um, the intraday ranges are actually compressing. Not a lot, 9, 8, 7, um, but that's something. Um, so anyway, getting back to the last two charts we want to look at. Okay, so the Qs, as I said, I wasn't trading the Qs today. I know people like trading the Qs, um, so I wanted to have it on the sheet. Um, it opened, you can kind of see the pre-market is to the left. You can see it dipped below our inflection, but it opened above 204. And what did it do? It went straight to, I guess, 206, right on the open. And if you miss that move, it opened above 204, so there's nothing wrong. If you want to get long, right on the open, above 204, 20405, wherever, where it was, put a stop below 203.70, risk of 30 cents, and try to ride it up. Um, you know, for a dollar or two. But if you say you missed that, but you saw, wow, the Qs really popped off that 204 inflection from the morning game plan sheet on the open, I'm going to put an alert at 204.20, 204.10, 204.00. So when it pulled back down there at 9.45 or whatever time that was, um, the alert goes off, you can buy there, and then your target is just the morning pop high, whatever that was, 206, I guess, and sell half the position there, trail a stop, and sell the rest at 208, which was our first resistance level, or sell half of what you have remaining, another quarter at 208, and hold the last 25%, because just because technology has been stronger than the market overall. As I mentioned at the top of the video, Apple and Microsoft are nowhere near their pullback lows from last week. And then finally, we'll take a look at the TLT chart. TLT was gapping up to 166. So the thought process here was it was a little bit tricky because um, there's no levels. And so I have where it's being sold in the pre-market on the game plan sheet, 166.65. So basically the way we had looked at it is like, okay, here's where it is in the pre-market. They're selling 166.65. We're going to see if it pops another dollar, dollar fifty on the open to 168. We'll short some common there. And if it does that, we'll try to buy puts for next week as cheap as we can get. And so that's what it did. On the open, it popped, I think, to 167.5. And, and we bought... I'm not even, I don't even remember what puts we bought. We might have even bought like the, one, the 160s for next week. For, and we want it to go down because we do think that bonds will um, actually sell off and yields will rally. The yield on the 10-year will get back above 1%. Um, and we'll see the TLT. And even if, by the way, like yields don't even have to go up that much um, for, I think, TLT to decay and come down in price. So, um, but we bought the 160s for next week. We got them really cheap, I think, for 70 cents. I think they closed at 220 or 230 or something like that. But the idea is, as it's moving higher on the open, um, people are not thinking about the downside, and maybe we'll pick them up really cheap. And the funny thing about it was, in the afternoon, it was basically still trading at 166.5, 167. And even though we paid 70 cents on the open for them, they were like trading at like 220. And so people were starting to think, the way that it gapped up 4 or $5 this morning, maybe one day next week we're going to walk in and it gaps down 4 or $5. So people are buying protection. And because they were buying protection, the 160s, basically they were bidding up our contracts for us. And we, we didn't sell them. Maybe we sold 10% or something. Um, oh, and then so in terms of the common, I used that, that spike right on the open. And it came down to S1. Um, and because it is in a very strong uptrend now, even though I think it's, I think over the next week or two, there's a good chance it'll work its way down maybe 10% from the high or so, um, certainly at least 5% from the high. Um, into, into S1, what I'll do is, from an intraday perspective, it comes into 64, I'll cover 50 to 75% of the position, I'll put alerts back up at the resistance where I short it in the morning, and if it comes back up, the same thing I did with VXX, short it into the pops, into the resistance levels that it established right on the open. TLT, it actually, it topped out, I don't remember where it topped out, but it got up at least to 167.5, um, was able to put some on in the, between 67, 67.5. I don't believe I got stopped out of that. Um, and so, I mean, the, the essence of it was basically, the other big thing is individual stocks are going to be moved by the market overall. When the market's moving 2 3% intraday, um, we have what we call market stocks, like Apple's a market stock, AMD is a market stock. And you can trade those market stocks, and you can look to see if they're showing, showing relative strength or weakness to the market overall, and then use that as an indicator. So if, let's say AMD today was showing relative strength to the market because uh, they reiterated their guidance. As the spies are coming into like, let's say, 
S1, 292, if AMD has come off to, I think it was 47 at that point, um, get long AMD. Buy 47, put a stop for below 46.50. Even if the market doesn't bounce that much off the 292 support level, maybe AMD goes back up to 49 or $50 because it had the positive reiteration, reiteration of their guidance and is showing relative strength. And vice versa on something that's showing relative weakness. Um, markets popping into 298 resistance, you notice something showing relative weakness. Um, be more aggressive shorting that as opposed to shorting the market overall. And these are all little things that you can do when the market is behaving like this. And I've tweeted out a couple of times already that um, you can sit this one out. If you haven't been trading for more than a couple of years, paper trade, get used to it. Although I'll say this, I mean, we'll see what happens over the weekend with the kind of the coronavirus announcements. The great thing is going to the weekend, people are anticipating the US number of cases are going to skyrocket. And there's a pretty good chance that's going to happen. And there's going to be, we're going to get those numbers on Monday. The best setup from a trading perspective would be the numbers go up from whatever they are in the US, it's 200 cases, maybe it goes to 1,000 cases. And we gap down three or $4 on the spies inside of today's range. And we see that we just, right on the open, the first move is up. And we notice that volatility, the VIX futures are coming down more. That's, that's how you put in bottoms. Um, the expectations, people are very nervous going over this weekend. And so anytime there's an expectation that something's going to happen, and people are leaning in a certain direction, right? You want people leaning, you know, the spies are going to go to 280, 270, whatever. We gap down Monday morning to today's, low, to today's low or close to today's low, or maybe even below today's low. And then the first move is like a rip to the upside. And we can't, you know, we're, we're holding above 295. We could go to, we could close the day at 305 and that could be it. And you have to mentally be going through those scenarios and understanding what does the scenario look like if I think, you know, the market's going much lower prices. What is the scenario if we're actually, this was it, this was our retest, or this was our higher low, right? We didn't actually test the low from last Friday. Um, and that, those are the things that the guys on our desk are doing every day and to take advantage of this. Obviously, we're not sitting this out. This is, this is kind of, this is our Super Bowl. This is the NBA Finals. This is the World Cup Championships. And so going into February, we didn't know that, you know, that people were going to all of a sudden care about the coronavirus. And... We wanted to encourage one of our traders who we thought could be performing better. And you know, our floor manager said to him, okay, let's set a goal, you know, $20,000 this month. And he set that goal. He says, if you hit that goal, you know, you've been talking, you've been saying you need noise canceling headphones. If you hit that goal, um, I'm gonna get you whatever noise canceling headphones you want. And then all of a sudden volatility exploded. And I was kind of like, wow, that's kind of a nice deal that you gave him, you know, maybe we should, double that goal or triple that goal. And, and uh, we said, all right, let's double the goal. And what did he do? He did 50,000 for the month. So the goal coming in for normal market conditions was 20. So I'm here to say, if you're watching the video, Kenny, pick up your headset, you hit your numbers, congratulations. Please, um, at the bottom of the video, if you have ideas for other videos or have other things you're doing during this high volatility environment, please put them. The sooner you have your ideas and things you want us to cover, the more I can start thinking or we can start thinking about doing these videos. Don't have a lot of free time during the trading day when the market's like this. But if I see some comments and questions over the weekend, I can start to think about it um, during my, our non-market hours.